So before you bring in your assets, like I'm doing now, you want to double check that your image, the sketch you are choosing to use, is the right size. So the way you can do this in Photoshop is just look at the bottom corner, the bottom left corner, and you'll see your resolution and you'll see your physical inches. So this is 40 by 30 inches by 350 pixels per inch. But how can I check my actual sketch? I can use the crop tool carefully, scroll and frame right around my image and it will show me the size. So that's 17 inches by 11 inches, right? And as long as it's larger than eight by 10, at something that's larger than 300 PPI, you're good. So then I could just click off of the crop tool and that will automatically crop. So crop is a dangerous tool, right? So then I wanna go back in my history or do command Z. But do check your, your size before you bring in your assets. And now I'm going to bring in my next one, which is number four. That's plenty big. I'm going to put it off to the corner. Just hit return to place it. And then what's in front of number four? It looks like we've got this thing, <laughs> which I, I think I had a, a drop down to, which is why it's nice to see this. So five and six and then one. So five, six, and one. Bring in five, maybe flip it so I can right click and I can flip it horizontally. Yep, that's gonna work. Okay, five, and then six. There we go, shrink it a little bit. And then one, this big rock right here. Okay. And I'm going to make that even bigger. And even though I'm having to grow that quite a bit to be my foreground element, foreground elements can be a little bit softer. It's the middle ground that needs to be super, super sharp. Okay, now that I've got all my elements, this is just like our first exercise, our, our cartoon line art jumble, right? I've got a gray background, I've got my sketch, and then I've got a lot of smart objects, at least five that I can use together. Now, these are like the pages I've torn out of the magazine. Now I wanna make my cuts from those magazines, but I'm gonna do rough cuts. And the only one I don't need to rough cut is the one in the furthest background. So this is the, the common mistake that beginners of compositing often make. They think that they need to cut out from all the layers, and you don't. Think of your vector project where you had like a big shape at the base and then you put other little shapes on top. I never need to cut out from this. So I never need to rasterize it until I want to color correct it. So just leave that sharp and then I'm going to lock it. And I can turn it off or I can set it at a really low opacity, right? And then lock it and turn it off. Now, the next, I do need to cut out, right? Because it's going to go on top of my background. So just to show you, I'll put it at full opacity. And in order to do that, I am not going to try to do a perfect cutout of this mountain yet. I'm going to do what's called a rough cut. So think of a rough cut as like prepping the element you want by roughly cutting around it, leaving a lot of overlap. And then later you'll do a fine, you know, selected cut. So to rough cut, first I'm going to turn off my guides because my guides can interfere with my lasso tool. So I just turn them off. They're still there, but I just use command semicolon to turn them off. And then I'm going to use my lasso, just like we've done countless times before. And then thinking of my sketch, I'm going to roughly cut, leaving a lot of overlap of the parts of this asset I want to use. And I loop around it. Okay, remember, this is a smart object. But now I'm going to use this. This is our magic shortcut for this assignment. Command J 
to duplicate. Now, Command-J will duplicate whole layers, but it will only also duplicate selections. So I made a rough selection. I'm on this smart layer. So if I hit Command-J, that will make a cutout of it as a rasterized layer on top. So because I'm using Photoshop, I've got plenty of memory I can use. I'm going to keep the smart object there just in case I need it. But I'm going to be using this. And I'm going to take the opacity down so I can see my sketch. Take the opacity down so I can see my sketch. Right. And I'm going to place this using Command-T, transform, just like we've been doing in the last few projects and put it where I want. I can even hold down shift and stretch it a little bit or right click and do things like distort a little bit because organic stuff we don't mind if it gets pushed and pulled. If it's man-made stuff like a skyscraper that's going to look a little weird right? because I'll be messing with the perspective. But you can see how it's starting to layer up now. All right, next, what do I have? Number two. Oh, I did number two. Number four. So let's bring in number four. And again, I'm just going to use the lasso, and I'm going to roughly cut a lot of overlap. And all this stuff underneath, that could all be useful. And then, off of the smart object layer, make sure you're on the right layer, Command-J to duplicate it. Then I'm going to place it in. I think probably around there. If I want to do Command T, or if you're using Photo P, Option Command T, then I can do things like distort it a little bit. Stretch it into my perspective. Warping's a little, a little weird looking. A little bit more than distort and skew for this. And then I can take its opacity down. And I start to see how these elements line up with my sketch. The sketch is, is how I control this composition. Now, in front of that, actually I might want to take 4 and I might want to stretch it down a little bit. So Command-T, hold down Shift, stretch it down. Okay. Now, looking at my sketch, I have 5, 6, and 1. So 5 is this one. I'm going to do a rough cut around what I want to use. And then Command-J to make sure I'm cutting it out of the right smart object. And then Command T, or in Photo P, Option Command T, to fit it in, and then distort it, skew it, warp it to fit with your perspective. So the colors are not going to match, the lighting is not going to match yet, but you want kind of the angle and the overlap to make sense as you're bringing these things in. Take that opacity down. Now I have this guy. Oops. I'm using auto select for group or layer, right? And that lets me just click on it and automatically selects that one. Then I'm going to do a rough cutout. And then Command J. And then he's going to come in from the bottom. Right about there. Take that opacity down. That's a little strongly horizontal, so I might Command T and distort it just a bit. So it looks a little bit more like slightly more dynamic angle that I'm looking at it from. It'd be nice to have it kind of go over the top of that moon a little bit. 
I can always turn on my guides, yep, to see where things line up. Okay, and then take that opacity down, and then my last, my in the foreground element is here. And I'm going to cut this out roughly. Command J, turn off the smart object, and then really. Bring this in large and distort it a little. Distort is very, very helpful with scenery and landscape because you can kind of set the, the orientation of everything. It's kind of changing where the camera is on the image. All right. Now... Now I can start doing clean cutouts. So what's a way I can do that? I'm going to turn off everything except my background and my first component. And I'm going to set my background to 100%. And then my first component I know is lined up with my sketch. Set that to 100%. But before I can cut it out cleanly, I know the colors are not going to match, right? So cutting it out cleanly, I could use my lasso, and I could just try to draw. I could use my tablet and kind of cut out chunk by chunk. But the better way to do it is to start by doing what are called direct adjustments. We're going to adjust the color and the lighting. And if we can get the color and the lighting to match better, that's going to be more forgiving when we actually blend the edges and cut them out. And this is a nice example because these are very different in their color and lighting. So first things first, I'm not going to touch the background. It's still a smart object. I'm going to work on the one on top of it. So I'm going to make this match this background. But then I can always rasterize this and then change the colors and the lighting on the background too. So I'm starting with layer three. Notice I'm not using clipping masks. I'm not doing anything complicated. I'm just directly affecting the pixels in the layer. So this is a new technique. We've been introduced to it slightly when we cleaned up our line art for exercise one. But this is selecting the layer you want to affect and then going to image and adjustments. These are called direct adjustments because they are directly affecting the pixels. You do not want to go to layer and then go to adjustment layers, even though they're the same settings, because these will put a filter above everything that's underneath that layer. That's really helpful in photo editing. In this, it gets really confusing. So instead, we do direct adjustments. And if you're unsure about it, you can always make a duplicate first. Command J, right? Okay, so now, on this layer on top, I'm going to go to Image Adjustments. There are three adjustments I need you to learn, starting with this assignment. Levels, Color Balance, and Hue Saturation. Levels, and we do them in that order. Levels, Color Balance, Hue Saturation. They all do different things. Levels adjust the, the lights and darks. It's like brightness contrast, but better. So Levels will show me that histogram. It shows me that in this layer, I have a lot on the dark side and not very much on the light side. And if I'm trying to make it match this, this has a lot more in the middle. Right? It has some darks, but not as dark as these. It has some lights a lot lighter than these. And most of it's in the middle. So the thing that's safest to play with with levels is the middle ground slider. It's this gray slider. And you can push that back and forth and see which one works better with your setting, even though the colors are so different. And I know that I need to brighten my midtones a little bit. Why is that safe? It's safe because levels is adding brightness to the existing pixels. But if you stay in the middle, you are never what's called blasting out, which is that, and you're never like losing things to shadow like that. So we play with the middle ground first. You very seldom need to adjust the corners. 